Well, it's official. We're now in British summertime. I hope you haven't missed your hour too badly this week. And for some of us, there is the slight consolation that it brings us just that little bit closer to the Easter break. But here we are in the British summertime. And, and there is evidence of that, that it has been lighter recently. We've enjoyed a lot more sunshine recently and it has been warmer as well recently. And there is evidence in my garden of new life. I can see the weeds really are starting to come back through again and they are coming back into the fore once again. And this, as I thought about a message for this Sunday and as I thought about the new life that I could see in my garden, it made me think of a very well-known phrase that the Lord Jesus Christ used when he was here on earth. In John chapter 11 and in verse number 25, it says there, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he shall die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Martha. Martha was the name of the woman that he was speaking to. And this phrase, I am the resurrection and I am the life, that was a phrase that was lifted and used by uh, a music group called the Stone Roses. And they had a song that was called I Am The Resurrection. And at the end of that song, there's an anthemic um, section where they sing I Am The Resurrection and I Am The Life. And I don't really know what Ian Brown from the Stone Roses was thinking of in particular when he used these words. If you read the lyrics of the song I Am The Resurrection, it's to do with a breakup of a bad relationship. And perhaps the, the singer is thinking about the freedom that he feels at the end of coming to the end of all of that, the difficulty that that has been put behind him. And then there is this um, celebration at the end, I am the resurrection and I am the life. But given the subject matter of that song, there is a very clear harshness in the tone of that song. One of the verses, one of the verses of the song says, don't waste your words, I don't need anything from you. I don't care what, where you've been or what you plan to do. And that, it doesn't really get much harsher than that if you're talking to another person. That is very uh, to the point and very direct and very unpleasant to have that if that was directed at you. And it couldn't be more different from the tone of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And although the Lord Jesus Christ did rise again from the dead. In this verse, he's not speaking about himself. I am the resurrection and the life. That is referring to us. That's referring to what he can do for you, what he can do for me, that he can give us life and bring resurrection to our experience and have that as something that we can look forward to in a future day. And so when the Lord Jesus Christ said these words, he was speaking to this woman, Martha. And Martha had a brother, who was called Lazarus. And at the time that the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking to Martha, Lazarus was dead in a grave. And immediately after that conversation, the Lord Jesus Christ and Martha went to the grave of Lazarus. And it says there, the shortest verse, at that point, we read the shortest verse in the Bible. And perhaps you already know what the shortest verse in the Bible is. In John chapter 11 verse 35 it says Jesus wept. That was his response to standing at the grave of his friend Lazarus who had died. And why God allows suffering to happen in the world, that's a very big subject. But here we can see through the tears of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, here we can see that God cares about our suffering. The Lord Jesus Christ was moved to tears as he stood at the grave of Lazarus. And it tells us in the Bible that we have uh, someone in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, who can empathise, he can sympathise, and he can understand the things that we go through in this world. And here is an example of him experiencing some of the difficulties that we face in life as he wept at the grave of Lazarus. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the Son of God. And after weeping at the grave of Lazarus, he then commanded that the stone be removed from the grave. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible teaches us that Lazarus 
rose from the dead and Lazarus came out from the tomb and he lived again. He was, he was risen from the dead. And in doing that, the Lord Jesus Christ showed that he's not just a man. He's not an ordinary man. He is the son of God. He is the creator God. He is the one that brought life to this planet and he proved his power and his authority as the creator God, as he commanded Lazarus to come forth and to uh, rise again from the dead. Now, when I think about this story, it always interests me to think that if the Lord Jesus Christ knew that he was able to bring Lazarus back from the dead, and if he knew that he was about to do that, then why did the Lord Jesus Christ weep at the grave of Lazarus? Why was he so moved at the grave of Lazarus when he knew that a few moments after that, that Lazarus would be alive again? Well, I don't know the answer to that question. The, the Bible doesn't tell us. The Bible just simply says, Jesus wept. But what I think, and this is nothing more than my opinion on the matter, what I think the tears of the Lord Jesus Christ show us is that the Lord Jesus Christ was deeply moved when he saw the effects of sin upon this world. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's from Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God is a God of love. He wants to save us from dying. He doesn't want us to face death. Now, we're not really speaking about death as we understand it, that we know that people die and that people, their lives come to an end here on earth. But when we speak here about death, we're really speaking about what the Bible calls the second death. And that is eternal judgment at the hands of God. That is a place ultimately called the lake of fire, that the Bible teaches that those that are unsaved at the end of their life, they've never had their sins dealt with, and we all have sins. If we don't have our sins forgiven through trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will face the second death. And God, as a God of love, he doesn't want anyone to face that second death. And that is why the Lord Jesus Christ said, he that believes in me, though he should die, yet shall he live. Salvation is not salvation from death here on earth. It's salvation from that eternal death. It's the promise from God himself that we will be brought eternally into his heaven and we will not suffer the judgment of God for the sins that are in, in our lives. So it's not a promise when he says, he that believes in me, though he should die, yet shall he live. When the Lord Jesus Christ says those words, it's not meaning that we will rise from the dead like Lazarus did. Lazarus would have died again. Lazarus was just risen back into this world and back into this life and back into the limitations of this life and would have died again. But the, the raising of Lazarus by the Lord Jesus Christ proved his power, proved his authority. And so when the Lord Jesus Christ himself died and when he rose again from the dead, well, his resurrection was something different. His resurrection was able to happen because he is sinless. He is perfect. He is pure. And the wages of sin is death, it tells us in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. The Lord Jesus Christ had no sin. And so the Lord Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. And it says in the Bible that he lives in the power of an endless life, that he is still alive and he is alive forever and he is able to give eternal life to us. That is why he said, I am the resurrection and I am the life because he did rise again from the dead and he is alive forevermore and he can give those things to us as well because of what he accomplished in his death. And so unlike the Stone Roses song, God does want something from us and he does care about us. And Jesus taught that God wants worshippers. That's what God wants from you. He wants you to worship him, not because he's going to force you to worship him, but he wants you to want to worship him and worship him voluntarily. And he wants all people everywhere to be saved. That's what God wants from us. He does care about us and he does want to reach and save us and give us that eternal life that we can enjoy a resurrection in a future day where we can be gathered up into his heaven for all of eternity. The final question 
that I want to leave from you is, just as the Lord Jesus Christ said to Martha, do you believe this?